we just saw was the ability to use the bash program to execute a script file. And we would give the script file's name as the first argument to bash. And then the subsequent arguments would be arguments to the script that was executed by bash. And this works generically for any script file that is written in the bash command line language uh, that you want to execute. But it turns out there's another way that we can run our scripts that's a convention that makes it feel like our scripts are actually binary programs, just like the bash program or like grep or cat or echo or any other program. And the idea is we can name a script file and set it up with some certain conventions that will allow us to then run this script file. And from our vantage point as a user of the system, we cannot discern whether this is a script or a full-fledged binary program. So there are a few things that we're gonna to need to learn about in order to make use of this convention. First, we're gonna to need to learn how to add what's called a shebang line to the top of the script file. And we'll learn a little bit about what that does and its significance. Then we're going to need to learn how to make a script uh, have some certain permissions as a file in our system. We're going to need to make the script executable. And we'll use a program called chmod or change modifiers to do that. And lastly, we need to know how do we get our program onto something called the path of our command line environment. And the path is where the shell is going to look for programs that are the first argument of a command. So if it's going to find this program and know that it should treat it as a program, we need to make sure that the directory that that script file is in is on the path. So we're going to dive into each of these three step by step to understand a little bit more about them. Let's begin with the shebang line. So this is the first line of a script. If we want to follow this convention of being able to run a script as if it were a program, we need to start the first line of that script with two symbols, a hash symbol followed by an exclamation point. And the, the shebang is a word that it comes from joining these two words together, right? Uh, so hash, the sh, and then the bang is what we often will call the exclamation point when we're working at the command line. Like uh, if you wanted to use it as a word rather than having to say exclamation point, bang is much shorter. And so shebang is uh, a commonly used uh, phrase here. You will also see this called the hash bang or the hash playing or the pound bang uh, on, in, on Wikipedia. But by and large in the United States, this would be called the shebang line. Immediately following the hashtag in the exclamation point is going to be an absolute path to the interpreter that we want our script to be evaluated by. And that's going to be bash in our examples today. And we'll look at what other what else this might be at the end of today's talk. Uh, but that's going to be bash. And so bash is an executable program that is found in the slash bin slash bash uh, path, right? And if we wanted to know where was path, uh, what was the path of bash, we could say which bash, and notice that it will print out the path of the bash program that we would use immediately following the shebang. So if you were on a system and you weren't convinced that that was where it was, but by and large, that is where bash will be. So what is actually going on here? What's the significance of this? Well, when the operating system goes to load a file that it wants to execute as a program, there are some certain conventions. Uh, there's uh, called there's an ELF file format that has some conventions. And if the environment reads a hash symbol followed by an exclamation point, which is specifically the ASCII values uh, uh, hexadecimal 23 followed by hexadecimal 21, it is going to say, okay, this isn't actually a binary compiled program that would have been written in C or something like that. This is a, a script program. And what is going to follow right after the hash and the bang is a path to the actual binary program we need to evaluate and then pass what comes after this into that program as input, right? So, this is a hint to the operating system that says, hey, this is a, an executable script file. And the interpreter that I want you to use is found at the path that follows right after the, the symbol. And then what I want you to do is start that interpreter and pass what comes after this. So the lines that follow, send those to that interpreter as input. All right. And so that's how we get 
a, an executable script file uh, to be interpreted as an executable. Each file in your file system has a set of permissions related to you as the owner of those files or you as someone in a group of people who own the files or anyone on the system at all. And this, the three sort of classifications of permissions are, can you read this file, can you write this file, and can you execute this file? And when we use the dash L to list files uh, using uh, the long form, we'll see a certain set of characters that indicate the permissions of each of a file. So if I say LSL in this directory, notice we've got some permissions here. And by default, uh, I've got uh, read, write, or execute as the owner, and then the group doesn't have write capabilities on this, nor does the uh, global user. Be the exact interpretation of that is sort of beyond our uh, scope here in this course. What you should just know is that if you're working in a server environment that is shared by many other people and you want to collaborate, you'll need to learn a little bit more about permissions in order to do so. For our purposes, all we really care about today is can we execute a, a, a file as if it were a program? And in order to set that permission and to change these modifiers of permissions on files, there's a standard utility program called Chmod that allows you to change those permission modifiers. And we're gonna be focused on a very specific use case of Chmod. We're gonna use uh, this function, to, uh, this command to say, hey, add the executable flag or give me executable permission on this given file and be sure that uh, I can execute it as a program, right? So if I say, if I clear this and say Chmod plus X, that means give me, set the executable bit for hello world, then I would have set the executable bit for that file. Right. The next thing we need to do is be sure that the directory of our script is on our path environment variable. So before we get to how we would make that happen, we need to talk just a little bit about environment variables. So you can think of these as the global variables that exist in your shell environment. Right? We saw earlier how we can set up local variables. We just assign some variable name, some value, and that variable will, will uh, be accessible to us in the future. And just to convince you that uh, the variables that we used in Hello World are available, uh, to, we, can, we can work with variables just the same at the command line. I could say, uh, for example, foo is assigned uh, the string of um, example variable. And then if I were to, on the next command, echo uh, foo, we would see that that string interpolation we looked at earlier occurs on this string value, and then echo uh, prints that value out, right? So the idea here is there are some global variables that we tend to call environment variables when we're working in the shell that are predefined for us in many cases, and that we can also go and extend and, and modify ourselves if we need to. And so there's one in particular that's important called the path variable. And if I were to echo my path variable, which is an environment variable, you'll see that there are a list of directory paths, right? And they're all separated by colons, right? So the first path on my path variable is user local s bin. The second is user local bin, user, lo user s bin, user bin, s bin bin, and then finally, uh, the very last place we look is uh, Mount Learn CLI bin, right? So what's up with these lists of directories? Well, when you go to run a program and you have a simple identifier at the very start, such as echo or ls or man or grep, so on and so forth, rather than a path such as dot slash hello world or some absolute or, uh, uh, or relative path, what happens is the shell is going to look through each of the directories in order to say, hey, uh, if I tried to run echo, is there an echo program in the directory user local s bin? No, okay. Is there an echo program in user local bin? No, okay. And it will keep looking in each of these directories, moving down the list until it either finds the first directory that has a program with that name and with the executable bit set, and that is the program that will get run, or if it doesn't find it at all, we'll see there's an error, right? So we could try this out. If I were to just run hello world, 
we see command not found, right? We the shell looked through each of these directories and couldn't find a program named hello world in any of them, okay? So what we're going to do next is try changing that path to include our current working directory in the path such that if we ran hello world from here again uh, or from somewhere else, this would work out, right? So as a reminder, our current working directory is in the environment variable named PWD. Right, and so PWD says here is the absolute path to where we currently are, which is also available through the PWD command, right? So what I'd like you to try doing is try adding and moving through these steps in your Hello World script, being sure that uh, we set up our uh, shell and this script file following these conventions, and you should be able to run your program, Hello World, uh, as if it were any other program by the end of it. So pause the video here, try moving through these steps. All right, so if I say which hello world, notice that there is no output because I have not yet carried through uh, those commands that we just saw, right? There's command not found. Oops, uh, and I meant to have that with just hello world. Right, so what you did was you modified hello world to add the shebang line and we added a line of slash bin bash following the shebang, we saved it. We chamoded plus x hello world. We'd already done this before, but just for good measure and to, to do these steps in the order that we talked about, uh, we've done that. And the last thing that we wanna do is say that our path is gonna be reassigned to be the current value of the path and we're going to append on our current working directory. Right, so we're reassigning path, we're substituting in the current path, we're using the uh, colon, which is how we separate individual entries in the path variable, and we're tacking onto the end our current working directory. So now if we were to echo, well, what is path after we made that change, notice that we have the path of our current working directory in it, such that if we now ran hello world, we see that our script is run and it looks like this is a command that's built into the system, but actually it's just a script file, one that we made in the course of this little lesson, right? And we can give arguments here like hello world uh, and then foo and bar, just like we saw before. And that's pretty cool, right? So this gives us the ability to bring commands into a file. And then if we follow these conventions for setting that file up, it now becomes like another, any other program that's installed on this system. And if we were to try which hello world, remember the which program will look through our path and see where is the actual uh, program named hello world going to be found that gets executed. And sure enough, it's the one that is in the directory we are currently in, right? And so by following those three conventions, by adding the shebang line, by making sure our script was executable, and by being sure our script was somewhere that was on the path, uh, on our path variable, we're able to execute our script as if it were a built-in program.